Hello everyone, uh, Paul Keith Davis here. Welcome to another little video blog I'm doing with my friend Brad McClendon. And uh, we've just been kind of talking about uh, 2018 and uh, kind of in keeping with the last few video blogs that we've done, talking about some of the things we have seen prophetically for this new season. And one of the things that most of you know that have watched my blogs that we're moving into a new day. There's a new grace, a new dimension in God. There is something fresh coming and, and uh, that, that we're not going to continue to do things as we have in the past, even though some of the truth and some of the principles of the kingdom, of course, are, are never changing. But there is something that is different about this year than the prior three years. For me, Brad, um, you know, I felt like myself and a number of other people that are among the remnant of God's people have been almost in a Joseph paradigm, you know, where <laughs> Joseph horrible. was in the dungeon, you know, for, for a number of years. But even after, um, you know, he interpreted the dreams of the wine bearer and the baker, he was in prison two full years, it says in one translation, two years to the day. And then finally his hour came and there was, you know, he woke up one morning in the dungeon and went to bed that night on the throne. Right. And I, I really like what he, the way he named his sons, the first one being Manasseh, the Lord has made me forget all my troubles. <laughs> we need to birth something like oh, that. Oh, <laughs> I'm so ready to forget all my troubles and just have something so new and fresh and so full of God, you know, that we just... You know, we forget about the season of testing and trials and hardships, and and I really believe that. I, I'm not just saying that to be oh, an encouragement. No. I really sincerely believe that that God's not going to leave us in the dungeon forever. No, I, and that we're coming out. You know, and go ahead if you. Yeah, like to I mean it is. It's 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 the year of God's favor. It's yeah. uh, Psalm 65, 11, and and you look in the Bible how many times God showed up uh, yeah. and totally transformed everybody their life. And they did forget their problems. They did yeah. forget their issues. And just his goodness itself can set you on a brand new path, yeah. you know. 65, Psalm 65, 11, you know, there's the word crown there is an interesting word. It's not what we think of putting something on your head. Right. It means to, to corral. Right, right. God is going to corral our year with goodness. Yeah. That means whatever direction you go, you run into his goodness. That's right. That's right. And I kind of like that. I like that. I, the goodness of God. David said, my heart would fail me if I did not believe that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I think that's descriptive of a lot of us. We want to see the goodness of God, his blessings, his favor. Um, you know, I've been getting pre previous to, to the last couple of blogs, you know, Luke 4, 18. Mm. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Right, right. To bind the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners and uh, open the eyes of the blind, but also to declare the favorable year of the Lord. Do you feel like that's where we oh, are? Oh, absolutely. But I, I think the way we're going to see it is not going to be like the past. I think we're, it's going to it's going to even change us. Okay. We're going to have a, a, a total different attitude of even how we minister. Right. How... how uh, the way we've done in the past and the, our nature, mm -hmm. but I know between me and you, with the dungeon has actually helped us, the darkness has actually helped us, and it's brought us out into a place to where we can care for right. what God gives us right. in our life. That makes sense. You know, Joseph, you know, he went through the dungeon. He went through H-E-double-L <laughs> right, for a right, few years. Right. And I won't say the word, but he went through some really difficult he betrayals did. and pain and heartbreak and all of that. But then when he came out, he served God faithfully for 80 years. Yeah. 80 years on the throne. Right. And we don't see a single instance where he betrayed God or where he failed God or where he forgot where he came from or, you know, arrogance never entered back into his life or none of those things. For the most part, from all we can tell from Scripture, he lived 80 years of glory. Absolutely. And my hope is if that is the paradigm, if Joseph is the model, then those of us that are coming out of the dungeon, we can have a, you know, the remainder of our life living in the goodness of God. I want to go back to that scripture, Psalm 65, 11. Why did you feel like this is the year of God's goodness? Well, one thing, we need it. I think the, I think the reason why he's bringing his goodness is to bring us into the Isaiah 61. I, I believe it's the 
I, I believe the, uh, the Psalm 65, 11, and Isaiah 61 kind of dovetail together along okay. with what you're talking that's, about. That's Luke 4, 18. Uh, yeah. Same it, thing. The it, Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I think that is the favor of God that we've needed, okay. is the Spirit okay. of God being upon our lives, not just in our lives, but it being upon our lives in order to change our environments. Right. Right. Um, I, I, I truly believe that we're in a season, like you said, we're coming out of that Joseph season and into a season where it's all God. Right. But we've needed the Joseph season. Right. And I could I basically would say the reason I, I feel like we're coming into this is not because it's something God is just saying. If you watch the seasons of God, even in America and what we've been through and what the world's been through, we are postured into the seasons of the Lord for his favor because we're about to see huge salvations right, right. through the goodness of God. You know, everybody's going to want to be to have Jesus instead of being forced to have Jesus. It says in the scripture that it is the kindness of God that leads men to repentance. Exactly. I don't believe God's up in heaven ready to beat people over the stick. I no. believe he's going to reveal his goodness. There's a scripture in Hosea that says that in the last days the sons of Israel will come trembling to the Lord they will come trembling to his goodness. Absolutely. And, and it's specifically an attribute of the last days. People will come trembling to the goodness of God. Now, I, I do know that there is some judgments coming. Oh, we, yeah. We know the scriptures are clear. You Absolutely. Can't, you can't make the scriptures say anything. But, but in the meantime, I believe that we're about to see the Lord show some kindness, and it's going to turn people's heart in a way that, um, that we haven't seen thus far. Is that what you're saying? Yes, and, and do you think... Do you believe that it's going to, even though there, there's a goodness that will be imparted, it's supernatural, but don't you feel like that we are going to be his goodness on the earth, even Absolutely. for other sure, people, sure. do to them as he is doing to us? I, I remember I had this experience back in July of last year um, where I saw myself and some others coming out of a cocoon. I know that sounds odd. But it was like a metamorphosis, which is what I believe Isaiah 41 was all mm -hmm. about when it talks about Jacob being the worm. Right. You know, he had a metamorphosis where he transformed into something more. He, even though when he was the supplanter, on the inside of him was the DNA of a prince. Right. And he had to have the revelation of it. And so I felt like that's where we, a lot of us were coming. But in this thing, an angel struck the ground and I saw Acts 10.38. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who did went about doing, doing good. good. Yep. Doing good. He saw the needs of the people and felt compassion. It says in, in Matthew 9 and Matthew 4 that, that he healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease because of the compassion and because he was good. Absolutely. Then he sat down and said, now the kingdom of heaven mm. is like a mustard seed. Mm, or the kingdom good. of heaven, you know. Uh, and I really feel like that's the pattern, that we're going to see a demonstration of God's goodness. We're going to go about doing good, healing all that are oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God's with us. You know, Israel came out of Egypt and Moses told the Lord, you know, if your presence doesn't go with us, I'm not going anywhere. Right. How else can we be distinguished among the nations of the earth if it isn't for your presence? Right. And so I really feel like that's where we are. I just assume sit right here in Orange Beach and not go anywhere exactly. if the presence doesn't go. Absolutely. Is that where you are? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the thing that comes to me is it's, as far as goodness is concerned, and it, it's kind of hidden, but when then the centurion came to the Lord, you know, begging him to, come, to heal his servant, which he desperately loved. Right. But the thing that this centurion uh, wasn't, ready to encounter is that the Lord wanted to actually go to his house, mm -hmm. which is totally caused conviction to come over him because he says, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. In other words, he mm -hmm. was expecting for him, he was expecting this man to be like the old system, just say something and it's done. But this man is taking the time out while he's on a trip and say, oh, well, I'll just come to your house. Mm -hmm which is that goodness, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. sneaks in there because mm -hmm. he, he never thought that the Lord would take his time to actually go and visit his house and yeah. be with his servant and help him up. And I think... Uh, well, that was counter we, to the culture. I exactly. Mean, you know, that was counter Ex to the culture. Exactly, and I think yeah. we're, we've kind of slipped into, into that mode where it's more not as personal, 
But with this goodness that's coming even upon us and changing our life, it's going to be more personal, which will cause a lot of conviction. Right. right. You know, obviously everyone wants to experience God's goodness. I mean, you know, that's a given. How do we get there? Mm. Relationship with Him. Yeah. Total relationship with Him. As I opposed think. to religion. Exactly. Traditions. Exactly. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to go to the Lord to pray because I have to. Right. If I'm doing that, I, I really won't encounter the Lord at all. There won't be an, a transformation in my life because my mind is in formulation mode. It's not looking for a person. It's actually thinking it has to do something in right. order to be okay and be good. But I think if we can seek the person, Jesus, then we're transformed right. into that likeness, which we've all wanted. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've, I've really wanted to be a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would like to be. Um, you know, I do this blog um, where I, I, I built off of Isaiah twenty nine thirteen, where it says, They draw near to me with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me. Exactly. And the Lord is not looking just for words. He's looking for the heart. Exactly. And, and it goes on to say, And their reverence for me or their fear of me was tradition learned by rote. The word rote means the mechanical repetition of words without regard to their meaning. Mm. And, and um, so somehow I think we have, even as the 21st century church, have become mechanical. Would yeah. you agree oh, with that? Oh, absolutely. That absolutely. we're going through the motions, doing the same things and all of that. And when the Lord is saying, no, I'm, 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 ch I'm changing, I'm shifting, I'm turning the corner, I'm doing something different. And you need to be able to be pliable with me to make the turn. Is that kind of what you're Absolutely. Hearing? I think we're, we're kind of in that church of Ephesus. You know, they were doing all the right things, right. but they'd, lo they'd left their first love. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It's hard that, to believe. That, it destroys me when I, every time I read that. Yeah. that well, lost their, and all the admonitions of good things they had done, and, and the, the very first thing it says of the church of Ephesus is they refused to tolerate the false. I mean, the Lord could have said. I mean, said, they were holding the standards. Right. They could have said, he could have said any number of things, but the first thing he said, the one thing you do right is you won't tolerate false apostles. I would have said, put pin a medal on those guys. Uh, you know, but then they had lost their first love. And, and he, just, well, he says, repent from where you have fallen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think yeah. about that. That's scary in a way. <laughs> it just shows you how much we need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I mean, we need the Holy Spirit because our natural mind is at enmity against God. Well, you know, I, 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 read, I wrote something like that uh, this morning on the, our Facebook, but it is true, and I know you've probably been through it as well. Haven't you gotten into ministry, doing it so much, but there's no character change in us? Mm -hmm. have, you ever, have you ever done ministry so, for so long, all these good works, but yet you're not changing? Well, evidently, we've... We've left our first love, which the first love is Christ, our intimate course, relationship with course, Him, yeah. which would change us. Yeah. But I think sometimes the enemy slips in there and makes all these godly works seem to be uh, that is the intimacy yeah. of God, but it's really yeah. not. So you're saying transformation is the evidence of a true relationship with God. Absolutely. That if we're not constantly changing more and more into His image, we're really not walking with God no. with first love affection. We've got to have His character. Yeah, I agree with that. I completely agree with that. You know, I think the Apostle Paul is evidence of that because he was constantly being trained, even at the end of his life, not that I've laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, pressing forward to the mark of the high calling. And, and I agree that if we're not constantly in a mode of transformation, that if my life is not becoming a little bit more like the Lord every day, then I've missed the mark somewhere along the way. You know, I, I said this the other day in the church. I said, I'd, I'd really like, at the end of my life, I'd like to be known as somebody that loved. Not somebody that did miracles, you know. Because right. if you really look at Jesus, and we're here we are studying about him, the main thing you know about Jesus, that you know about Jesus, that's the foundation of, of his life, is you know he loves you. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, all this other stuff was great. All the things he did was great. But when we think about Jesus, I mean, what do you think about? Or do you first th start thinking about the ministry and everything he, mm -hmm. he does? Or do you think about how much he loves you yeah. and how much he cares for, how much of he's been there for you? Yeah. You know, he's never left us or forsaken us. To me, it's always been a little bit of a, 
a mystery uh, uh, to me about John. You know, I've often wondered, you know, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, can there be anything greater to say about somebody? My question is, did, did John simply have a revelation of the Lord's love and that's why he had the relationship he had with him? Was his revelation of the Lord's love different than Peter's revelation of the Lord's love? Mm. Therefore, it opened the door for a level of intimacy and relationship that he and John had, the Lord and John had, that maybe the Lord and Peter didn't even have. Right, right. I don't know. I'm wondering about that. Mm. In other words, the revelation that the Lord loves me. Um, and as a result of that, it postures me for a relationship with him that maybe I would not have been able to have if I didn't have that revelation. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. And, and so therefore, what, what should I be seeking? A revelation of his love. Absolutely. Because the revelation of his love, I, you know, when I had the surgery, you were here. You were gracious enough to drive here to be here when I had the surgery. But I was taken and I, and I was in this haven of love. And the Lord took a little piece of his heart and he, he began to delegate. It's almost like he took a little piece of his heart and offered it to us. And he says, take my heart and manifest it in planet Earth. Well, it's, it's a heart of love. You know, let the love of God burn so brightly in us that it brings in the greatest, greatest harvest of souls the world has ever seen. But it's all based on a revelation. And, uh, and so and as we close this blog, uh, why don't you just pray? And ask the Lord to release an anointing, a grace, a favor. Because I, I bet there's a lot of people out there that question the Lord's love. They've probably have been through a lot of stuff and they're saying, Lord, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And maybe you can pray some grace on people to begin to have a revelation of that. Well, first of all, I, I just I think those that will be watching this and watching it now, um, you've probably been beating yourself up because you haven't felt the Lord. You haven't. You don't feel like he's coming to you. But I... I truly believe from this morning's prayer time with, with God this morning, he's given me an answer. And you've beaten yourself up, uh, and you've allowed the enemy to religiously just tell you you're not close, uh, God doesn't like you. But it's because he's gotten you, the enemy's gotten you so busy, he doesn't want you to have that encounter with the Lord. But I'm telling you, all you have to do is drop the stuff that's pushing you, just call on his name, and I guarantee you his presence will come. Because if we call on his name, he is there. Yeah. And so I just, I just pray that uh, for you today, that even the condemnation that has been on your life has not been yours, has not been conviction. It's only bringing death. So I break that condemnation off your life. And I just uh, beseech you, just say, Jesus, come. Mm -hmm. That's all he wants yeah. is a relationship with, with, with us. He wants his friends back. And the enemy's been trying to push us away from the Lord by either good works or uh, struggles in life. It's all to try to distract us from having that encounter with the Lord. So I just pray that encounter of Jesus to just in, uh, envelop your life, attack your life, invade your life, even it being upon your children. Lord, I, I even pray that you would show your presence and your glory to families now this yeah. year. Yeah. You told me this year that you would show up in families. And Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen.